Yo, what's up? It's your boy Jibs. These are the melancholy stories of an American brown boy. Let's get into it. Remember when you were a kid and you were surfing the interwebs with your Hotmail account or your AOL account at baby girl 55 xo kissy lips at AOL.com. You'd be sending messages to, the, to your boo ASL and all of a sudden you see an email pop up that said something like, only you can help me. Or I'm in desperate need of help, need money, please open. Or something like that. And it'd be a Nigerian prince asking for 10 bucks, nine bucks, please send as soon as you can because I'm stuck in, I'm stuck in Nigeria or wherever and I need to get home as soon as possible. I've lost my wallet, I've lost my passport. And you being the vulnerable kid that you are end up sending the money because you feel so bad for this guy. Or you ever are on the side of the road and then some guy asks you for money and you feel so bad for him or her and you give them that money and then later on you find them partying at the club just... I'm like, bro, I just gave you five bucks earlier. You're not alone. We've all fallen for these tricks. I've fallen for these tricks. I've been deceived, jinked, hoodwinked, hijacked. I don't know. But over the years, I've learned how to be wary and to keep my guard up and how to make sure that whatever situation I'm in, I am thoroughly vetting it as much as I can. Now this is to say, you know, you don't always know whether what's coming towards you is a scam or not. They come in all different shapes and forms. Sometimes people are really good at convincing you that they need their that they need help. Sometimes emails are really well written and you can't tell the difference between a phishing scam or a regular email. So I'm gonna tell you about some of the stories that I've been through and then talk about some of the steps that you can take to make sure that you are cautious and don't lose out on money or get your identity stolen or all these various types of scams that really can ruin your life. This is part one of a two part scam story. So the first story is an in-person scam that I encountered and the second story is gonna be about an email scam that was way bigger that I went through. So stay tuned for that episode as well. So I remember this one time I lived in Pittsburgh and I would walk to and from school every single day, three miles there, three miles back, cause I'm a crazy person and I love walking. And I remember this one time I was walking back home and all of a sudden there was nobody on the street and out of the corner of my eye zooms this really nice Cadillac zips right next to me and brakes really hard the window rolls down and there's this lady she's bawling her eyes out and she's saying words at me and I can't really understand so I, I tell her to breathe just articulate your words what do you need she starts crying and she's saying that you know my my dad is in the hospital he just had a heart attack and I am really low on gas right now and I have no money in my wallet and if I can't make it to the hospital he might die and I might not be there and I could really really use your help please do you have some money for some gas so this woman seemed really really distressed she seemed legit I felt really bad for her and I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, absolutely. Just well, how much do you need? Without even, so without even saying how much money she needed, she was like, okay, well, let me prove to you that I'm real, I'm legit, I'm gonna pay you back. Uh, and she takes her phone out and she's like, you know, you can, you can take my number down. Uh, I am one of the prosecutors for the city of Pittsburgh and I just wanna let you know that I'm legit and that I will pay you back. Here's my phone number and just give me a call just to prove that it's real. So she gave me her phone number. I dialed it real quick and her phone rang and I'm like, oh, okay, she seems legit, but I mean, I was gonna give you the $20 anyway. She said, yeah, you know, uh, if you ever need any help with the law in Pittsburgh, just let me know, just give me a call. And then I was going to grab my wallet for some money, but even then she wants to prove even more that she is legit and she, rolls down her back window and there's a kid in a car seat and he's like two years old. She's like, that's my son. I wanna let you know that you know I'm legit, that I'm not here to steal your money. I'm here to just, I just need money to get to my dad. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, good luck, God bless. I took $20 out of my wallet. I handed it to her and she just drove off. I had felt actually kind of pretty weird about that whole situation because she had kept insisting that she was legit and that she kept trying to prove herself when I didn't even ask her. I took that number and I looked it up online and what I had found was that she, this lady goes around 
telling people of different situations like her dad being in the hospital, crying and takes her money and then leaves. So her phone number was legit uh, and I tried calling her, I tried texting her, whatever, but like it was probably like a Google number or something. So I ended up losing $20, which isn't that bad at the end of the day. But what I really, really felt bad about was the fact that there was this kid in the back seat that was seeing this behavior. I'm sure that this kid had seen his mom, or if that was even his mom, this lady, doing these scams to all these different people. Horrible that he has to be there to witness that and to take that in because I'm sure that doesn't have a positive impact on him. That was an in-person scam, so how do you avoid being in that situation of giving 20 bucks to somebody and losing out on that money? Now, a lot of times you can't really tell people's intentions. You don't know whether they're gonna take your money or steal it from you or take you somewhere that you shouldn't be going. Like A lot of times you just don't know people's intentions, but there are precautionary steps that you can take to make sure that you minimize that risk. I think the first and foremost thing that you can make sure to do when you're interacting with somebody or when somebody's asking you for money or asking you for something is to analyze their body language. If you notice that somebody's always fidgeting or they're not staring you in, in the eye or they're looking away all the time when they're talking to you or whether they're like really intensely looking at your eyes all the time when they're talking to you, either one of those extremes is not a good sign. Pay attention to where they're looking at when they're talking to you. So that means that if they are more advanced or like mega scam artists, then they're gonna be pretty fluid in their movements and talking to you like you're a normal person, but they might once in a while like glance over at where your wallet might be or where your purse might be located. So just kind of keep an eye on their eyes and follow where they're following. Is the person trying to overcompensate? So an example of that lady, you know, she kept trying to prove that she wasn't scamming me and that she was legit. And that's just a sign that you're not legit and you're really trying to overcompensate and overplay that. In hindsight, that makes a lot of sense. and. In the moment, I should have known that she's trying to scam me. In the case of somebody on the street that's asking you for money that wants that money for a specific reason, a lot of times what I'll do or a lot of times my friends will do is, hey, you know, instead of giving you this money, what if I take you to the store or I take you so-and-so and get you some food because maybe that's what you actually want or get you this or get you that. That way you know that that person actually does need that. Uh, whether it's food or a drink or whatever, or a jacket, anything like that. That way you're actually helping that person by giving them that item that they need as opposed to just the money because there are people that'll take your money, go spend it on things that they shouldn't spend it on and even though they told you they were gonna spend it on uh, food or XYZ, they go spend it on you know, cigarettes or whatever that may be and that is the most common way I think to get scammed and to make sure that doesn't happen, you know, just say up front, you know, I can't give you the money, but I can buy you whatever you need. That need makes sense. Even though it might sound cynical, I go for the most part with the mindset that everybody is pretty much out there to steal your money or out to get you or try to deceive you in some way, unless otherwise proven innocent. If you're interacting with somebody and you feel like they might be scamming you, and if you have the time, then if you take a little bit of time to like talk to that person and extend that conversation past like the minute that they're trying to hustle you for. Like, let's say you take that conversa conversation and move it out to like five minutes if you have the time. What you'll notice is that if they're really trying to take your money, they won't be able to have the patience to stay there and have a conversation with you and get to know you because that's not what they're interested in. So if you have the time for it, what I've found is that if you're really, really friendly, like want to get to know that person, they're going to want to not have to do anything with you and are going to ditch that scam. And also what I've found is that there are people that honestly, you know, they are scamming people or stealing people's money because they're in certain situations where, you know, they feel like they need to do that. And a lot of times when there's somebody that shows them kindness, and has a conversation with them, especially if you can add value to that conversation by saying, you know, uh, there are avenues for this, this, and this. So for example, like I've had conversations with somebody who was asking me for money. I told him about like some of the programs in the areas, especially 
specifically a program that I was involved in and that person was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check that out. So that's part one of a part two series. Part two is gonna be about a really big email scam that I went through and could have potentially lost thousands of dollars from. Uh, I was actually like on the border of losing that money. Stay tuned for that episode. If you feel like there are any tips that you have for avoiding in-person scams, please leave them in the comment section so other people can learn from them as well. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next episode.